Well done, you've made it to the Chemist Timeline Project. So the first thing you need to do, if you haven't already, is select a chemist from the list that I have. After that, you want to make sure that you are re uh, recording the websites that you're going to do your research on. Here's a spot here, here, and here. And the reason we want three different resources, and by the way, Wikipedia does not count, is so that you have the chance to make sure that the information you're collecting is accurate. Remember, accuracy is going to be um, determined uh, more effectively if you have multiple things that you're collecting from. So what are you looking for? You are looking for four to five significant events in your chemist's life. These would be events that have to do with their actual chemistry career. So it could include school, um, it could include graduation, or degrees, or jobs, or people they worked with, or discoveries, or awards. All of those kinds of things count as significant events in the chemist's life. You also have the chance to record two to three personal events. So that would be things like getting born or dying or having kids or getting married or moving. All of these things can end up determining how much time a chemist has or how much energy uh, or motivation or inspiration a chemist has. And then finally, you want to make sure that your timeline is drawn to scale. And I've helped you out with that with the next page that you're going to get to deal with. So let's take a look at that. Your chemist timeline is already set to scale. This part right up here where it says chemist name, I did not put that on your sheet. You need to make sure you write down the name of your chemist. So this zero here is the start of your chemist's life, and you're going to put down whatever year your chemist was born. So let's say that your chemist was born in 1923. Then you're going to make sure that over here you write down the how uh, what year it was when they were 10. In this case, it would be 1933, and so on. So make sure that you include what actual year it is at the various ages that they are, as well as having the various ages. Now, chances are there's not a lot of significant chemistry events in this person's life between the ages of 0 and 10, and probably even between the ages of 10 and 20. But there might be some personal stuff going on there, and some people are prodigies, and they have some major discoveries uh, early in life. Things will probably start to pick up between the ages of 20 and 30. And then, depending upon the death age of your scientist, you may not end up using this second line. It's possible that your scientist is actually going to live to be past the age of 90, so you can scroll down or you can use the bottom uh, part of that page to continue on with events in their life. Some people also have had awards um, given to them after their death, and you can record those down there if you need to include those for part of your four to five events within the life. All right, so then your optional things, there will always on projects be one option you should choose is going to be uh, to color in the or make icons and color them that describe what type of event. So for instance, is it an educational event? Is it a discovery? Is it an award? And the icons or the things you choose to describe will depend upon which chemist you have and, and what you think is important in their lives. Alternatively, you could choose what you think is their most important contribution and you could star that or highlight it or, or make it more visible in some small way. Don't forget to record your three resources at the bottom because these are worth points right here. Let me show you the scoring guide. Before I can grade your project, you need to look at your own project and figure out what did you learn most about it because that's the first question I'm going to ask you. Tell me what you liked best about it in writing, and then what would you do differently if you could do it over? This section down here where it says uh, teacher feedback, this is my opportunity to give you a compliment on your work and a suggestion on ways you could improve your work. When I grade it, the first thing I'm going to ask you is to tell me something that you learned while working on this project. And then I mark it off. If you can give me some details, then you're going to get full credit. If you can't give me details, but you can tell me the big ideas, then you're going to get half credit. And if you say, I didn't learn anything, then you get zero. Originality, because your scientist is different than everybody else's scientist, or should be, then you're most likely to get 100% on this one. Completion means that you did all the required elements, so that would be the four to five events from a chemist's life, the two to three personal events, and having the timeline mathematically accurate, which means an event that happens at the age of 25, you're putting in between the ages of 20 and 30 on the timeline. If you've done a nice tidy job, that's your full credit there. And then if you've recorded your uh, resources from three places, that's your 
um, credit on this column. If you have any questions, now would be the time to talk with another student in class or ask me. Thank you.